Good morning. Today, we can pass on to the last uh, chapter, Electronics and Devices. Why I gave this heading as solids and electronic devices? What is the reason? Once the electronic chapter was introduced as only solid state physics. So once we know the solids, then only we can understand what is electronics. So that the heading uh, given solids and electronic devices. So in which uh, subject physics, we are going to discuss about solid, what is some structure of the solid, simple cubic crystal, what is crystal and solid, what is amorphous solid, what is the structure, what is simple cubic, body centered, face centered, like that. Once we know the concept of these solids, then only we can understand about semiconductors. Then the energy binding in solids, junction diode and transistor. The junction diode and the transistor is a 20th century investment. Digital electronics and the problems. In this uh, discussion, I want to give some important explanation. Generally, we can understand about the solid. Solids have a definite shape and the size. We know the solid have a definite shape and size due to strong interatomic forces. So solids are one in which atoms are closely packed. They won't uh, move from their places so that they have definite shape. There are two types, crystal and solid, amorphous solid. Yeah, crystals are one in which atoms are arranged in regular uh, pattern or regular manner over a long range. In amorphous, there is no long range order of arrangement of atom. That is a different. Both are regular arrangement of atom. In crystal, the arrangement of atoms over a long range. Whereas in the amorphous, the arrangement of atom no longer a long range. Crystal example, sugar, sodium chloride, quartz, metals or crystals. Amorphous, we know <coughs> glass and rubber. So have you seen the manufacturing of glass just like uh, amorphous stage so that that may be poured into a particular shape by uh, puffing by our mouth then only it becomes a solid. So those solids are called amorphous solid. Rubber also because even though it is an elastic body that's in a way hoops law. Like that we have to understand it. The units Unit means the fundamental quality, everyone knows. Even in the first year syllabus, units and dimension, what is a unit? The fundamental system is called unit. So 10 kilogram mass of a substance, like that, 1 kilogram is a unit, 10 times of that unit. The unit cell of particular lattice is the smallest and the simplest structure by repeating which in three dimensions the lattice can be built. There are the total lattice may be 10 units or 15 units like the basic concept. The unit diameter nearly is equal to 5 into 10 power minus 8 centimeter. 5 into 10 power minus 8 centimeter may be the diameter of the single unit. Cubic crystal. We you know the cubic crystal the structure but I studied in the chemistry also. So this is a cubic crystal. This is called simple cubic. Lattice points are situated at the corners of the unit cell. So if it is an unit cell, these are all called corners. At the corners, the lattice points are there. In the body center, BCC, body center cubic, in this there is a lattice point at the center of the cell in addition to eight corners. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 corners. In addition to that, there is a center in the body that is called body center. Similarly, FCC, 
face center cubing there is a lattice point at the center of each face so here one two three four faces in each faces there is an additional atom will be there in addition to the corner points these are all the three types of cubing then characteristic the characteristic may be very very much useful for solving problems can we go through the table this is a table a design because of welfare of yourself for the neat examination and any centrally sponsored examination and also exclusively for medical entrance lattice type we know three types simple cubic body centered cubic face centered cubic atomic radius a by 2 simple cubic a by 2 bcc root 3 by 4a for fcc a by 2 root 2 Lattice point per cell only one. Here two lattice point. There are four lattice point. Coordinating number six, eight, and twelve. Backing factor five by six for AC simple cubic. That means nearly point five two for base hundred cubic root three by eight nearly point six eight for face hundred cubic five by three root two point seven four. So this is a simplicity uh, given for your understanding. That is a thing you have to understand for your future problem. So this uh, sometimes they ask atomic radius. So a by root two, if a value is given divided by two, that will give the radius of simple cubic. If a value is given divided by four, multiply by root three. If a value is given divided by two. Root to two. That will give the radius of FCC. Density of the crystalline solid. Generally, density mass divided by volume. Therefore, mass of the unit cell divided by volume of the unit cell. That is called density of a crystalline solid. So, density. Take a sample. Take a unit cell. In the unit cell, what is the mass of that unit cell divided by volume? That is. n into a divided by n over that number divided by volume therefore n a by b n small n number of unit cells a the atomic mass divided by n over that number into volume this is a formula for finding density single crystal when the periodicity of the pattern extends throughout the certain piece of metal If the periodicity extends throughout the certain piece of metal, then it is called single crystal. Poly, poly means multi-crystal when a liquid solidifies. So, if I take a liquid, the liquid condenses to form solid. For example, water freezes ice cube. Like that, when a liquid solidifies, monocrystal grow with random orientation. The aggregate of this monocrystal is polycrystal, metal to isotropic. Liquid crystal. Nowadays, you know, liquid crystal display, LCD, LCD um, TV. Nowadays, LED TV also comes. LCD display, liquid crystal display. Some organic crystals do not go directly into liquid phase on heating. So we know any metal is heating, ultimately it becomes liquid. Some organic uh, crystal do not go directly into liquid phase on heating. In a certain temperature region, they become fluids but remain their anisotropic properties under long range orientation or order. Such a crystal is called liquid crystal. What is bonds in solid? The forces which bind the atom together, the forces which bind the atom together in solids, are all electrostatic in origin. The strength and the type of bonds is determined by the distribution of electron in the outermost orbit in the atom. That is called our cell. There are four type of binding: or bonding, ionic bonding, covalent bonding, metallic and van der Waals bonding. Am I going to be no chemistry? Van der Waals bonding is the weakest one. Covalent bond is very strong one. Energy bonds in solid. 
The completely filled band is called the valence band. In this I want to discuss what is an energy bond in solids. For example, if I have silicon 14, for example, electronic configuration, the first cell, K shell, 1s2, the second cell, 2s2, 2p6, the third cell, 3s2, and the 3 P2. So this is the electronic configuration because each and every cell occupies 2n square electron. If n is equal to first orbit 1, 1 into 1 square 1, 1 into 2, 2 electrons are possible. Therefore, first cell is completed. This K cell is completed here. L cell n square 2 square 4, 4 into 2, 8 electrons are possible. Therefore, the 6 plus 2, 8 electrons are completed. The second cell also completed. The third cell, 3 square 9 into 8 electrons are possible, but we are having only 4 electrons. It is called incomplete. So, I, you should understand what is the incomplete orbit. So, as far as the silicon is concerned, the maximum bond 3. First one completed, second one is also completed, the third one is called incomplete. The incomplete bond is called valence band. This incomplete bond is called valence band. The next bond to valence is called conduction band. So that is called a, suppose this is a first energy level, this is a second energy level, this is a third energy level, this is a fourth energy level for our example, this is energy level 1, this is energy level 2, this is energy level 3 which is incomplete or sometime may be complete or incomplete. Incomplete cell is called valence bond. The next bond to valence bond is called conduction bond. These are all the examples I have given for your understanding. These are all called energy bonding in solids. Energy gap between the two is called the forbidden energy gap. So energy bands in solid, metal, insulator and the semiconductor. So this is a diagram I have given. For metals, so this is a conduction band, this is a valence band. This conduction and the valence band are overlapping as far as the metal is concerned. If it is overlapping, there is no gap at all. In between conduction and valence and band, there is no gap. That the gap is called forbidden energy gap may be zero. Since there is no gap, electron may not hidden here. Therefore, all metals, electrons are there, free electrons are there. Therefore, this metal becomes a conductor. What is an insulator? In an insulator, the conduction band, this is a valence band. If this metal is heated, what happens? Some electron may jump from valence band to conduction band because more free electron. So as far as um, insulators are concerned, insulator or non-conductor, insulator. What is insulator? Through which charge cannot flow through it. So there is a large gap between conduction band and energy, nearly 9 electron volt. The forbidden energy gap is very high. Even though if you are heating more, the electron may not jump from valence band to conduction band because forbidden energy gap is very very large. What about the another thing is called semiconductor. The semiconductors are one, germanium, silicon, like the tetravalent element, in which there is a valence band and also conduction band. Here the forbidden energy gap is very small, nearly one electron volt. Since the energy gap is very small, so if it is at absolute zero, it behaves like an insulator. Even semiconductor behaves like an insulator. When the semiconductor is placed in the room temperature, the temperature is more than sufficient to conduct electron from valence band to conduction band. That is the advantage of semiconductor. Why I am telling that? Once it was thermionic emission. Thermionic emission. In which there is a glass vacuum tube, in there are two electrodes, 
one electrode is called cathode another electrode is called anode anode is always positive charge when the cathode is heated what happens any metal is heated it emits electron these electrons are attracted towards the anode, anode plate then there is a flow of electron that causes current this is the first this is called vacuum tube first it was invented before uh, this semiconductor was invented this is the uh, first invention for us so you might have studied in the computer also first generation computer those computers are made on the basis of wall system only so what is the thing here if more gets heated heated more on the electron go and reach the plate so the electrons are crowded here that stops further electron to reach the anode therefore the defect comes in the wall or in the vacuum tube thus defect is called space charge defect so we are introducing a third electrode now so already only two electrode they are called diode after that i introduce a third electrode called grid d r i d what is the meaning of grid grid is nothing but a mesh metal mesh so wherever we are making mesh in any place means we can control anything so here also the mesh the grid is used as a third electrode the grid is always given negative potential keep your mind grid is always given negative potential therefore it stops more electron to reach the anode only the electron may passes through the gap hence this grid may control the electron to reach the anode so this grid is called controlling grid so it is called controlling grid so like that uh, the vacuum tube was invented but all of the important uh, disadvantage of this vacuum tube even though we are getting very high power output we should have this uh, vacuum tube only in order to get very high power output we should have this vacuum tube but all of the important drawback here it occupies large place so i already told you that the computer now we are using the more facilities if you want to design such a facilities with the use of vacuum tube the computer may be this room size very big size so the operating system is very difficult but nowadays the more system maybe comes in our palm palm top laptop everything is consigned only because of this the thing the drawback of wall system another important drawback is they are passive so we have to wait until cathode gets heated after cathode gets heated only this electron reaches the anode then circuit completed then only computer or tv or radio works have you seen the old type of radio so if you on the radio you have to wait for 3 or 4 minutes after that only the radio starts working similarly the tv similarly the computer the first thing is the computer we have to on the computer we have to wait for some time until cathode gets heated after getting up cathode heating then only it reaches the anode then only the circuit completed then only we are getting very very passive but nowadays not like that as soon as you open the switch immediately everything comes in front of you even that we are not having any passion to go until the connection the net connection and everything we want more speed so active so that the passive component fails later that only the active component comes the active component is called semiconductor in the 1942 or in the 1940s the semiconductors were introduced what is the advantage of semiconductor if you take a semiconductor even at the room temperature it starts conduct electron from valence band to conduction band no separate heating is necessary so the semiconductor and the transistors are called active component once we have studied the passive component so the slowly the wall system went on now we are only the digital electronics by using semiconductor and the transistor are you clear that is important thing so that the diagram given this is a valence bond this is a conduction bond in metals they are overlapping in semiconductor they are having 
ஸ்மால் எனர்ஜி கேப் நியர்லி ஒன் எலக்ட்ரான் வோல்ட் ஆர் லெஸ் தேன் த்ரீ பாயிண்ட் டூ எலக்ட்ரான் வோல்ட் ஸ்ட்ரிக்ட்லி ஸ்பீக்கிங் என் சாலிட் ஆர் என் இன்சுலேட்டர்ஸ் வாட் ஆப்பன் ஃபார்முலர் எனர்ஜி கேப் இஸ் வெரி லார்ஜ் ஃபார்முலர் எனர்ஜி கேப் ஃபெர்மி எனர்ஜி இஸ் வெரி லார்ஜ் தேர்ஃபோர் இட் கெனாட் ஈவன் இஃப் யூ ஆர் ஹீட்டிங் இட் இஸ் நாட் பாசிபிள் மெட்டல்ஸ் ஸோ ஜஸ்ட் நவ் ஐ வாண்ட் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் இன் மெட்டல்ஸ் கண்டக்ஷன் பாண்ட் இஸ் பார்சிலி ஃபில்டு எக்ஸாம்பிள் சோடியம் ஆர் கண்டக்ஷன் பாண்ட் அண்ட் பேலன்ஸ் பாண்ட் ஓவர்லேப் தெரியலியம் no formula and gap in the presence of an electric field the electrons can be excited to the empty energy levels immediately above the highest field level that is called fermi level these electrons are accelerated by the field hence good conductor so they are using as conductor as far as the metal is concerned as far as the insulator the valence bond is separated from the conduction bond by a large energy gap the formula energy gap is very large nearly 9 electron volt more than that under the electric field the electrons cannot gain enough to jump to conduction band the exclusion principle does not permit any transition within the valence band within the valence band no two electron cannot jump therefore cannot flow what about uh, in semiconductors in the insulators 629 electron volt 629 electron volt 629 electron volt is the forbidden energy gap so what about the um, semiconductor the forbidden energy gap is very small nearly is equal to 1 electron volt at the absolute zero conduction bond is completely empty and the valence bond is full hence behaves as an insulator at a room temperature some electron from the valence band acquire enough thermal energy to jump over the forbidden gap into conduction band they leave behind an equal number of empty state in valence band how much electron three electron jump from valence band to conduction band there is a three vacancy in the valence band this three vacancy called as hole if negative goes there these holes are nothing but positive then semiconductors are two type one is called intrinsic semiconductor another one eccentric semiconductor what is a intrinsic semiconductor so intrinsic semiconductor the germanium the tetravalent element germanium or silicon the valency 4 in the purest form the purest form of germanium or silicon is called intrinsic semiconductor the intrinsic semiconductor may not be directly used for the conduction what is the reason so we know pure may be good for something this pure may not be good for others for example if you want to purchase a pure gold If it is a pure gold worth about 24 carat, we can keep the gold in the almara or in the form of biscuits. We cannot make use this gold with 24 carat for ornaments. In order to make the ornaments, we have to add some impurity. So that we have to add some copper. So then only it becomes 22 carat. It is useful to make ornaments. If anything made a pure gold what happen we cannot have some solid wholeness if we make a chain chain gets break itself we need not rub and pull immediately first thing is we cannot make ornaments in order to make ornaments we have to add impurities some permissible amount but nowadays what happen instead of adding copper to the gold we are adding gold to the copper that is a problem now so we cannot find it so very difficult to identify the purity of the gold everyone knows so that most of the jewelers gain more money in the jewelry because of the pureness so germanium or silicon on the purest form just like that gold we have to 
it is we have to add some impurity so in the impurity we have to add the adding of impurity to the intrinsic semiconductor is called doping the impurity which are adding is called dopant dopant for example if i take germanium or silicon which has valency 4 if it is added with the pentavalent element pentavalent element like uh, phosphorus like that if it is added the covalent bond forms in the covalent bond we know germanium has four valency phosphorus has five valency so four with the four then the nth binding is there excess electron will be there this excess electron may be given to the next atom since it given to the next atom this impurity is called donor impurity because it donate electron to the next atom for further bonding this type of semiconductor is called n type so for n type we have to add the impurity the pentavalent impurity to the pure germanium or silicon of tetra valent element then the n type n denotes negative therefore electrons are major decay so as far as the p n type is concerned which carries more electricity means electron carries more electricity the electrons are the majority carrier that is the thing how to understand it so electron majority means one is electron another is called positive positive means hole h o l e holes are minority carrier these are all called eccentric semiconductor like that the tetravalent element germanium or silicon the valency 4 that may be doped with the dopant with the trivalent element like the aluminum indium like that this has valency 3 they form p type semiconductor p means positive what happen here germanium valency 4 aluminum valency 3 in order to make covalent bond with the germanium it required one atom this one atom may be taken from the nearest atom so one atom or one electron they are accepted so they are called acceptor impurity in the acceptor impurity since one electron taken from the neighboring atom there is a hole the hole is called positive therefore holes are majority area in p type p for positive hole means positive this positive or majority area as far as the p type semiconductor is concerned the electrons are minority area this p type and the n type are called what we call this they call this eccentric semiconductor which are very much useful for us that i have given in the chart pure silicon semiconductor that is those in which no impurity is mixed in this we have electrons in conduction bond and equal number of holes in valence bond as charge carriers for current to flow in in intrinsic eccentric a yeah, pure semiconductor germanium or silicon has very small electrical conductivity at the ordinary temperature and is not very useful conductivity can be increased by adding a small quantity of trivalent bismuth or aluminum gallium etc or pentavalent phosphorus antimony arsenic etc impurity this process is called doping and the impurity we add is called dopant the semiconductor is called eccentric so we already discussed so eccentric germanium or silicon with the phosphorus or pentavalent n type semiconductor electron or the majority carrier donor impurity because it donate excess electron to the neighboring atom germanium or silicon with the valency 4 is doped with the trivalent impurity like aluminum they form p type semiconductor here also it requires one more atom for the covalent bonding with the germanium this atom may be taken from the neighbor atom therefore recreating a hole in p type 
பாசிட்டிவ் ஹோல்ஸ் ஆர் த மெஜாரிட்டி கேரியர் அண்ட் எலக்ட்ரான்ஸ் ஆர் த மெஜாரிட்டி கேரியர் in this in order to make a covalent bond it accept one atom from the neighboring atom so those impurities are called acceptor impurities the conductivity of semiconductor is very important the conductivity we already discussed in the electronics but in our electricity also in the electricity what we have discussed that in electricity the resistance of a conductor directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area or r is equal to rho l by a where rho is equal to r a by l this is called electrical conductivity so this is called specific resistance the reciprocal of specific resistance is called sigma that is called conductivity everyone knows that is called reciprocal of resistivity is called conductivity so just like that we are having conductivity the process of conductivity in electronics also in the electronics because solid state devices we have to concentrate not a single current am i correct because just like our intrinsic eccentric semiconductor sometimes we are having more electron sometimes we are having more holes this ne is called electron concentration or density of electron or nh number of hole concentration this ne and nh product will give ni squared what is ni squared intrinsic semiconductor concentration this is important formula that is not in the syllabus but in your central syllabus you have to use this ne into nh will give ni squared once we know ne and nh ni squared can be calculated once we know ni squared ne separated and nh may be separately calculated so that it is a sigma sigma is nothing but just a given in the table electrical conductivity sigma is equal to e charge of an electron into ne mu e plus mh mu h this is a total conductivity as per as a semiconductor is concerned why i take these two this also big derivation need not waste time you can understand what is the conductivity of semiconductor is equal to e into ne mu e plus nh mu h where e charge of an electron ne electron concentration nh hole concentration mu e mobility of electron mu h mobility of hole we you know what is mobility drift velocity acting on unit electric field is called mobility you may have studied in the second unit itself in the current electricity so instead of uh, making the external force given to the electron there is a sudden increase in velocity called drift velocity from the drift velocity acting on unit electric field vd by e will give mobility so here also electron has separate mobility and hole also has separate mobility drift velocity per unit electric field this are the thing how to understand it so so after that we know we can understand what is the p type semiconductor what is the n type semiconductor and combine these two now the next chapter that is called junction diode we will see junction diode afterwards thank you